We're uh, live. What's up, everybody? <laughs> okay. I'll let Maddie introduce the episode. Actually, <laughs> go ahead. You, you do right. your thing. Yeah. Uh, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Old Reader, New Reader. Uh, thanks again for being so patient last week because we had to move it because I was sick. But we're all good now. I'm alive. I'm here. And we are doing blankets. We are doing blankets. That's exactly right. We are talking about Craig Thompson's wonderful, beautiful book spoilers about how i feel about this book yeah um, and mega spoilers for this too i mean for those of you who are new we yes. this show is full of spoilers Just right so in, ca- get go. in case you have never read this book don't forget to hit that like button uh but now's the time to bounce because we are going to be talking about some spoilers so um i was given this book I want to say about six, seven years ago, my wife bought it for me just on a whim. Like I had no idea what it was uh, for Christmas. Cause that's what she usually does. Cause she knows I'm, you know, the big two Marvel and DC. I usually buy what I want from there, but with books like this, independent books or books that are, you know, really not well known. She usually finds them for me. And some of my favorite books have come from her, including this one. So I opened it up on christmas day and christmas night i read it in one sitting because i couldn't put it down and for a book this big i mean we're talking right almost at about 600 pages mm-hmm. i i say for me i've read it in this i've this time i reread it it took me about two hours to read oh, uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a quick read but in order to absorb the beauty of it you really got to sit down and and give yourself some time with it so hello this, I guess, semi-auto biography of Craig Thompson's life in Wisconsin. But, okay. So, Maddie, would you like to tell us how this book begins? And again, spoilers for those people that have not read this book. Yes, yeah, so I could do like a, a quick yeah. summary, if you will, of this. But um, without going too much into detail, because we'll, we'll talk about it as we go through, but... Um, basically, we we it's like like Omar said, it's like semi biographical. I'd say pretty biographical, of course, but um, just this guy's life, basically. So just from his earliest moments in childhood and growing up, and kind of his his and obviously not his full journey of life, but I think you see some major pieces of it and, and how that develops and like what he goes through with him and his brother. Um, that because that's a it, basically we, we kind of deal with two different relationships here, right? With like you explore a lot of, of him and his brother and that relationship they had growing up as well as this relationship he has with this girl that he meets at church camp. And I guess you could argue a third relationship too, is just his relationship with God. Absolutely. Which was very interesting. This isn't something I normally read. I mean, I don't get that kind of stuff and I think they do it in a, in a way that is very accessible to people. Yeah. I think you know, like it, just following his journey through these three different things was really beautiful you know and like just because basically the book jumps back and forth of him like you know meeting this girl and and growing up and 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 dealing with those things as well as kind of like flashbacks to his life growing up sorry that, that's like it's hard for me not so i don't want to start from the beginning and be like and then this and this and this but it's like that's like my the there, there is a lot of things that are set up earlier on right like when he's talking about especially uh breaking down like what he is so yes at heart craig is a christian he's a brother but he's also an artist and that's how he escapes reality is by drawing and painting Uh, and then one of the things he found out I, i love that narrative it's they're talking about how you know out there in the country, they burn their trash is what they do. Yeah. And it, it's almost like a rite of passage for him. By the way, this is what the artwork looks like. That's beautiful. Like, <sighs> without reading it, like, for me, I would be look, looking at that and be like, eh, not for me, not my kind of art. But, man, I can't imagine, you know, this being drawn any other way. It's just perfect. So he's talking about the trash and burning it, and that's what he wants to do. He wants to, you know, he looks forward to going to heaven. Mm-hmm. And he wants to burn his art and get rid of it because that's kind of his way of like saying goodbye to the past 
and right, move, that, moving that forward. At some point when he learns about heaven, and he, he learns about that like Sunday school and about how like, mm-hmm. hey, you know, we're on earth right now and it sucks and it's awful, but eventually you're going to go to heaven. And so at that point in his life, when he learns that, he's like, okay, everything really sucks to me. Like my home life is really bad, you know, and my school life is really bad and I'm getting made fun of and everything in my life sucks right now. So I'm just going to give up and focus entirely on this thing. You know, not on anything really else in my life. But I'm going to focus on well, he's being- God yeah, and, and go to right. heaven too. So he's being bullied, right? So a lot of people, I'm sure, can relate to things like that. Whether you're looking forward to heaven or whether you're looking forward to a video game or whatever. It is important to say, though, that this takes place, I want to what was it, the 80s, right? I, don't I think, think it, this came it out in 2003. It doesn't give us a timeline. but Childhood, it, so I think 80s. I want to say it's early 80s because they were still using telephones, house phones, and pay phones. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe even early 90s just by some of the clothes and the hairstyles they were people were wearing. Ray pointed out something really interesting, which I noticed too, uh, was his art does change from the beginning of the story to the end of the story. Um, and depending on who he's drawing also changes too. Like it's almost like a little Calvin and Hobbish. At the very beginning. Right, when they're kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when he's reaching that moment of adulthood, especially, well, we'll talk about that here in a few minutes. So, yes, he meets this girl named Raina at church camp when he's he's 16 years old, I think. And he falls for her. like, And, and she's totally into him, too, because they're both outcasts and they're neither – one of them come from money and – they're not into sports, and they would rather just be hidden away um, and not partake into any of the parties or any of the things the, that the other kids are doing. Yeah. So immediately well, he cl- he clicks with her. Like that, but yeah, he like he she is everything that he wanted, right? Like a muse, uh, almost like a that thing that that we were talking about earlier heaven right it's almost like this is my way out and he sees wait am i did i get cut out (laughs) hello ironically maddie Sorry, did I cut out? No, you didn't. I could hear you the whole time. Oh, okay. Sorry. I, I could, think I think the I, internet just it must froze. be on my side, yeah, because I couldn't see you. Or, oh, I mean, you're just going like this. So I was like, I fr- I think I froze for a little bit. If I'm not, uh, I asked if Omar froze, so maybe it was. Yeah, I think it was on my end. There okay. must have been some kind of look, but so even in the way that um, Craig Thompson draws her. He almost gives her like this angelic uh, halo to her, almost like yeah. that picture of Jesus that we keep seeing. That one right there. So mm-hmm. It's a very popular picture. Whoops. N- totally not that picture, but the picture of Jesus right there. That's in probably if you have any Latino family, that's in every room of the house. Just about <laughs> that and a picture of Mother Mary. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's his, that's like his way out. He sees her as somebody that. You know, he can focus all his energy on. And and she kind of digs him, too. So they get together, and then they start writing each other letters. And it's so cute, right? Because so we'll talk cute. we'll talk about how it makes us feel, too, uh, well, a little it, bit later. Well, it really brings you back to high school, you know? And just, like, being that person. And, like, that's, you know, they're your everything. It's a whole just over dramatic language and feelings at all times. <laughs> like, I need you. I've got to be with you. Just... Right, because you, you you have to focus on you have to focus on that thing, right? That's in your life, and this happens to be his obsession. And in a way, he is kind of an outlet for her too, because she's also focusing having issues at school. She she comes from a house where three of her siblings are mentally challenged. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say, okay, this is totally the eighties, by the way. By the language that they use, like there is no like the bullies, every bit of that. That's the way bullies were. 
I mean, mm. there is there's no politically correctness when it comes to bullies and 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 things like that. And even oh, yeah. even even Craig himself, the way that he describes the mentally challenged siblings, you know, he's just the way a 16 year old kid would be because he doesn't know any better. Well, and this came out in like 2003 too. Yeah, but I think you know when you're. When you're channeling the '80s and and things like that, like that's the way kids were, or that's the way I remember me and my friends were, right? Or, um, and not that there's anything bad that he said. It's just the like just nonchalantly just put it out there. So she asked him like to come and spend a week with her, right? And I thought that was so cute because that also reminded me of things too when I was younger. And he's like, yeah, let me talk to my mom. He goes and talks to his mom. Like, keep in mind, this is a 16-year-old kid. Yeah, he's like, uh, uh, her mom's a Christian. Yeah, that's exactly. Well, that's how you sell it, right? Yeah. Oh, don't worry, mom. Like, they're Christian folk. Everything's fine. There's not really going to be any. Because at the end of it, when, when she does pick him up, she's like, oh, you know, you guys really seem like more than friends. And he's like, oh, yeah, we're, we're more than friends, mom. And she's like, oh, I would not have let you go. <laughs> my mom would have. And I, I, we both came from very Catholic households. <laughs> oh yeah, I would have never let me do that. <laughs> oh my god. I will. I will say that that was a really that. <laughs> there's a lot of this book that hits close to home. Not just for me. I'm sure for a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Whether whether you were an artist, whether you were an outcast, whether but the big thing is is the love, like the first love, how innocent it is, how pure it is, and how much you want to just drown in it, and then it goes by so quick and it fizzles out and it's the end of the world, or so you yeah. hope, or or so you think, right? So he goes and spends a week with her, gets to know her, gets to know Raina's family, her father, uh, her siblings. And I remember one of my favorite moments in here – actually, I have two favorite moments from the book. Uh, one of them is when he uh, – because this happened to me. Uh, he overslept, and he was like, no, no. I was supposed to be spending every waking hour with you. Why didn't you wake me up? I, like he woke up at like noon or something. And she's like, oh, yeah, I've been up since 8. I started writing. And man – uh, and then there's another moment that I really, really liked that I thought it was so pretty. Uh, when he was describing her sister, what was her name? Lori or Lauren? How uh, here it is. Yeah, Laura. How that's beautiful her name. she looked when Yeah, when just she takes, hair. Yeah, when she takes that fragment, right, of time and just how how beautiful she looked. Even though she's mentally challenged, like he sees the beauty in her, whether that's him as a Christian or whether that's him as an artist, sees this uh, beautiful person. And then he kind of realizes that maybe we've been wrong as what we portray as ugly. So I thought that was really cool. By the way, we didn't mention the big thing, why it's called blankets. So, Maddie, why is it oh, called blankets? She makes him a quilt. <laughs> a blanket. <laughs> yeah. I yes. mean, there's more than just that, too, because he also talks a lot about sharing a, like a bed with his brother going up to you. Yeah, well, that's how like, it starts off. A lot of like imagery, of course, with blankets and like what that means. But the big, the big tie around is the quilt that she made for him. So, like while she's waiting for him to come visit, she makes him this beautiful quilt with kind of her own kind of fragments of her own things. Which and, is why the other reason why it's so special. And honestly, during the I've, I've read this book three times, and during this reread, this is the first. Every time I read this, I forget about the babysitter. And oh, how, how the fucked minute, up the minute it popped up when he just like yeah, yeah. thing with like coming out of the room and laughing. Yeah, and then and taking then, his and then the other brother goes, uh, Oh my god. And I was like, uh oh, this it was it was hard. So as an older brother to two younger brothers, you know, it it he's put in the situation where it's not thrown in your face, but we're led to believe that the babysitter was molesting him and his brother. Or the, yeah. the the male babysitter. And well, it's it's very it's very in your face later in the book. Well, yeah, it's in your face, but it doesn't it's it doesn't come back later. Like it helps or it it builds who he is, but like he doesn't really talk about it until later on in the book. I think yeah, with yeah. his brother, um, which you know, and, and I, I, really and I appreciate how honest he is about that because it's so hard for men, especially. I mean, for for anyone. Yeah, absolutely. But like to 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 be that honest. As a as a as a man, and be honest about what you've gone through, is really touching and beautiful and brave. I thought it was handled really well. Yeah. Um, and what I was saying is, as a, you know, as an older brother, I completely f f 
like felt so bad for him when his little brother's walking away and looking back at him, right? Because nothing like that happened to my brothers and I, but I remember like when the, these group of kids like ganged up on my brother and they threw a brick at him and they were holding me down, like beating us up. Uh, and I felt so shitty because I couldn't go and protect my brother. Even though I think I was like 10 and he was seven, like my daughter's ages that they are now. Mm -hmm. And, and even though I was getting my ass kicked, just watching my brother. I think you froze again. I'll keep going. <laughs> but no, I, I, at least I, hear me. Can you yeah, at least hear right. me? You, you, <laughs> you, yeah, you, we couldn't hear you, but you just, you went out for a second. That's really weird. Okay. But no, I, 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 I really agree because you can see how much this has affected his life too, because you know, the kind of trauma he went through is very significant and not just from that, but especially from that, but also from his family and then feeling so powerless because he's done with his own trauma. How do you deal with your own trauma and still be able to protect people in your life that you love? And so he carries so much guilt, right? Because he's like, I didn't do anything to help my little brother. I right. knew exactly the things he was going to go through and I didn't help and he carries it for so long, and I'm, and luckily, I think he kind of moves towards a resolution towards the end with that. But that obviously very much affected him, and and, and it just his motivations throughout his life. Um, I think um, I think that that was a good way of putting it. Like, so there's a lot of things that happen within these pages. So it's not just a love story. It's not of coming of age. It's not about finding yourself. It's not just about, you know, rekindling that relationship with God. It, 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 it's got everything. It, and it's done in, like I said, it's 600 pages. And I felt like I just read this and didn't give it justice because rereading it was two and a half hours. So, he, and obviously, he is just head over heels with her, oh, about her. And I think this is where he tells her he loves her, right? Like, he just comes out and says it. Yeah. But she doesn't say, I love you back, which, hey, we've all been there. Yeah. And, and you know, you can tell it's a lot, too, because even though she's really happy and is is really, I think she probably does love him in a way, and they've got this this special relationship. I mean, she's still young and she's got other priorities, which is hard for him to reconcile too, just because he's so, when you're, when you're in that kind of relationship in high school, your first big love, right? right? There's an idealization that happens. And it's really hard to reconcile that this person could continue to have a different life outside of you because you get so enveloped with that person and so focused on that person. Mm -hmm. And we can see that he has issues dealing with that because to him, this is his world, this is his muse. And they have that one day where um, they go out with like her friends. Yeah, yeah. And he's just really upset to be there because he's like, because he just wants. Why to be can't with her. we just sit with the two of us where I draw and you write and we do this all day? I don't want to be here. I don't feel comfortable here. This isn't my scene. And I think we've all been in the situation when you're growing up and you're trying to figure out how relationships work and understand that these person, especially long distance exist. relationship yeah. too, because I mean this is. Her, his mom and her dad drove halfway mm -hmm. and you know they they met in what was it the border of Wisconsin and uh, Michigan right mm -hmm. I think that's what it is so it's it's a long way and they're writing letters to each other and calling each other so the moment that they're together that's what you want to do you want to be like I, I just want to spend time with you don't let me oversleep I don't want to hang out with your friends I just want to be with you and Keep in mind, he's also 16, too, so he doesn't understand the way the world really works. This is what I meant, like, the way that he keeps seeing her. Or images like that. Yeah. Like he keeps seeing her as, you know. And the fact that she's such a, a loving person because she takes care of her brothers and um, her, her sister also puts her on a pedestal. Yeah. Right? Like it it's like, oh my god, not only is she, you know, godly, she's a saint. And that just I mean, that how can you not love somebody like that? Um of course she has her flaws, but he doesn't see it. So one of the things that he does, which is really pretty, at first, you know, <laughs> I love this part where she's asking him to paint something for mm -hmm. him for her, right? In his room, in her room. And at first he was like, oh my gosh, he's going to ask me to have sex or something. I don't know what I'm going to do. 
And no, she asked him to draw, to paint a picture. So he paints a canvas of the tree and both of them together. It was a tree that he would see outside of his house. Mm -hmm. So uh, that comes into play a little bit later, along with all the other things that we've been talking about. Yeah, while we're there for that week, we also get to kind of explore uh, a little more about her own personal life. Not just her siblings, but just her parents who go with that divorce. Right. Which was really interesting to read through, too, because, you know, her mom is trying to build a new a new life, and she doesn't see these differences as reconcilable, and, you know, she's just trying to move on. And then the, the dad is still really hopeful that this is all going to be over. Like, they kind of, they're sharing the parenting at the same time, and they're co-parenting, but the dad's still hanging on to, like, all this to be good again. And so, I don't know, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was interesting to see that and see about him, too. Because then also, like, late, I guess later, we had a really good scene with the dad where he, unfortunately, <laughs> he walks into the bedroom after they've spent the night together. But I think, it, but then you can see this, like, awareness of like her happiness and understanding and he's he, he leaves which is not what most parents would do <laughs> not more most fathers would not handle that situation the no. same way that that scene the love making scene by the way is probably this is the painting by the uh, or similar to the painting i can't find the picture of the painting but this is what you're in store for here this kind of artwork i just Damn it! Where I need to find it. Each chapter, by the way, begins with his brother and him, like when they were kids. And whatever the story, whatever's happening there, they go back and touch upon in the main story. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to show the love making scene because I think it's one of the most beautifully drawn panels. <sighs> this is the second time. Damn it! I wish I could find it. Like I said, it's this book's almost 600 pages. I should have bookmarked it, but no. I was like, oh, I'll find it later. But I thought it was really, you know, there's different ways that you can approach something like that. It's your first love, and they're making love for the first time. It has to be perfect. It has to be beautiful, at least in his eyes, right? Mm-hmm. And... That's the way the panels are done. They're done really, in a way, kind of classy. They're not, they're beautiful. No, I agree. I mean, the scenes are really beautiful. Like, like just, the way that he draws, like, the whole page of them together is just really beautiful. Yeah, I'm trying to find a page that doesn't show, you know, not that it's bad out here. I don't care. We get demonetized, but whatever. But, I mean, that's just a beautiful picture right here of him and and then the closer they get to each other, it's like they almost become like a truly, like a, you know, one being. Mm-hmm. And that's just such a beautiful way of drawing things like that. I, I don't know. I just, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was perfect. Like this, the scene right here where he's holding her face uh, over here. It's beautiful. So, um, nothing lasts forever. And... He ends up leaving. He goes back home. And everything is perfect at first, right? So I I know I've been in a long-distance relationship. Everything is great. We're going to make this work no matter what. We're going to be together forever. And unfortunately, that's not the way the life works out. Yeah. So they start – she – actually, she's the one that starts distancing herself from him through the phone – at first, it's through phone calls, right? Phone calls are like – he's like – he keeps saying, I love you. Oh, but before she, he does leave, like the last time he does see her, she writes him a note that says, I love you too. Mm-hmm. That is also important. Because now he's like, you know, he's got hope. He's like, oh, th- she totally loves me as much as I love her. This is going to work out. And as time goes on, you know, sh- more and more, like she just stops sharing things with him. And it. Thank goodness for that mute button. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, and eventually, they become so distant that she's like, hey, I don't know if this is going to work out. You know, This is just going to diminish. Like, she uses that word. And he's like, what are you talking about? This is going to work. So he refuses to give up. He's the one that wants to fight for this relationship. 
and yeah but she knows and honestly i think she probably knew before he left mm. i, I think know. he was i think he was still looking for his heaven well i think he was i think she knew oh no no she knew yeah i i, 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 I don't know it's I hard to tell absolutely right absolutely her oh okay. Okay. absolutely one of those because <laughs> i you know you know because like this is wonderful but like realistically what happens with this right you know he and served a purpose and they had a great time i think that's going to be a really special memory for her forever but yeah so he keeps saying i love you right and she replies back craig craig you know the way you're talking is really intimidating and no guy wants to hear that after saying i love you or nobody wants to hear that after saying i love you and he's like what do you mean what are you saying She's like, you know, it's just bound to happen. I need space. Yeah, she's just... like, it's way too much pressure for her. She says that. She's like, this is just, it's heavy. It's a lot of pressure. Man. And, uh, yeah. I mean, he gives her time. He gives her her space. She doesn't reach out to him. And he gives her enough space that he himself, you know, like, had decided what to do that he's he can't go on living like this so he tells her you know i'm just reina i'm just calling you to say goodbye and she's like hey i'm uh, i found out i'm graduating uh in three weeks so i mean that was an important part of her life that she didn't share with him and that was the moment that he was like yeah i'm just calling to say bye and she's like where are you going and he's like i'm not going anywhere and in a classic over the top manly way because we like to burn things Write a passage. He takes everything that she had ever given him and shared with him, puts it in that metal bin that he talked about earlier in the story, where country folk burn their trash, and he burns everything except Maddie, blanket. the blanket. He just couldn't do it, so he puts a, he puts it in a bag and he puts it in the back of his room. And then he, you know, he talks about years later, like he said on his 20th uh, birthday, he moved out, his brother moved into this room, and him and his brother started getting close together again, which I thought was wonderful. And in a very, uh, I thought this was beautiful too, over dramatic kind of way, because that's the way teenagers tend to be, is he's daydreaming about that painting that he painted in her room, right? this one here now whether it's her or him painting over that painting with a white canvas to symbolize the snow a blanket of snow if you will we don't know but that's that's where he wanted to leave it as as a white canvas and then there's uh, little footnotes in the back which you know talk about his story his relationship with god uh, but that is pretty much the end of look at look at that gorgeous picture, man. This is beautiful. Yeah. Um. Hey, would you, what would you like to uh to bring up, Maddie? What would you, what would you like to say? How did this make you f- feel? We don't talk about feelings enough on this show. <laughs> I think I usually do. I uh, so I was surprised that I didn't cry. Maybe because I mm-hmm. wasn't expecting to. Because I, I've talked about it on the show, but I tend to cry a lot in reading stuff or watching things or playing things. Watching commercials. Or just any time, you know? <laughs> okay, I get it. Here comes out. I'm crying a lot, but I didn't cry. Okay. So, props. But I, I was really touched by this. I thought it was really just a beautiful narrative throughout. You know, I think it was really honest. And I really appreciate that because I think you don't get too many stories where you you really feel like they're open and honest and vulnerable. And I felt that the entire time you could could really empathize with him at any point in his story, in his life. You could see yourself as her or him. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've all been there. Whether you're the one that wants to end the relationship or whether you're the one that's hanging on to whatever's there. Absolutely. And we've all been there. I mean, your first love and like what that's like and, yeah, my, but, all consuming, and you, you know you can't deal with anything else. It, it's just there is there is nothing outside of that love, right? All that matters is that that feeling that they get those people give you. Yeah, and you don't want anything else, including you know your own family, his brother. That's why it was really nice to mm-hmm. see that 
him and his brother have a good relationship at the end of the book again, like when they were kids. But Not I- that they had a great relationship because they were hilarious together because it reminded me a lot of my brothers and I. Especially, well, this didn't happen, but I love the part where they start peeing on each other. The two little boys, they just start peeing on each other. <laughs> I was like, what? This is awesome. It's such a little boy thing. Oh, absolutely. I mean, honestly, it's seeing seeing him and his brother made me think so much about my my nephews because I like raised them slash kind of grew up with them Mm -hmm. and like all the kind of emotions and like shenanigans they got into is so similar oh absolutely yeah it's it it is uh it is the way brothers and you know your siblings are you you miss them when they're in another room i I love that part where they you know they share the same back together i was like oh and yeah, I, I absolutely love that. There's yeah. a there's some wonderful imagery in this book that talking about it can't do it justice. Uh, it you go through all the motions with the characters and you sympathize with them. And a lot of you know, there's not a lot of comic books that do that. A lot of independence books, yes, but not a not a lot of comics hit you right there. It's it's a great book and. I'm glad that we were finally able to read it, or you were finally able to read it for the first time, and me reread it. Um, I've, I've seen this cover around forever because I remember, like, this came out in 2003, so that's I don't know, that was my prime reading time. That was your prime <laughs> reading time. I've seen this everywhere, and just never picking it up, mm-hmm. which is surprising because I mean the the cover's beautiful, so I'm really surprised that it just didn't happen. So I'm I'm glad it finally did. I think this is the best time I could have read it. Winter time is usually a good time. <laughs> I read it at Christmas time, and it was snowing the next day, and I'm like, "Oh, this is a perfect read." I don't want to think about that chick that ended up dumping me that summer. <laughs> Long distance relationships. Uh, to me, this is one of those books that I give a ten out of ten. It is beautiful, perfect in every way. You can relate to just about every character. That is my opinion. Maddie, what would you give this book? I absolutely agree. Excellent. I think this is easily recommendable to anyone. I think this is a this will go on my list of of comic books that you can recommend for a new reader. Mm-hmm. Or like comic books to, to recommend to prove that not all comic books are the same. Because I think, <laughs> you know, people get stuck, right? Because they think, you know, comic books as a medium is just a genre. But comic books have many genres in them, and this is a great example. Yeah, absolutely. Now, this is available in soft uh, cover, and it's also available in hard cover. And I remember when we first got this, my wife wanted to teach this for young adult literature in one of her classes in high school. This comment from Comic Book Crazy. Yeah, it, it wouldn't have... It wouldn't have flowing yeah you're having underage sex right so of course that's the very first thing they're going to see doesn't matter what the rest of the book is about and we live in the bible belt so. oh absolutely yeah you Although, you know and you know i think some people would, would read it and try to argue like an anti-christian message in it or something well they would where we live um I I mean, you, yeah you, you but i mean they could do that with any book right well yeah but i mean I could see them doing that specifically. J. Rocks, are you talking about the assassin, Scott the Assassin? I'll wait for him to answer. <laughs> Did you guys read? Have you? I've read it. I really liked it. I ended up getting it uh, at the beginning of the year. It's uh, it's a really beautiful book too. I think I like. Well, right? I think I like this one more. Um, Hayden was laughing because I I just recommended Bottom Feeders. <laughs> um, on my last fangirl so simple. <laughs> Damn, man, stop telling me to buy things. Listen, Hayden, this is how it goes. This is how it starts. Yeah, this I is, was uh... you. <laughs> I was you once, Hayden. Now look at me. Look at her background. Look at all those books. Annihilation, Conquest. She's needing Annihilation now. Oh, I uh, can't wait. Well, I mean, I'm gonna. Give, if somebody doesn't give that to me for Christmas, I'm gonna give it to myself. So that's that's gonna happen. Now that is a good Christmas gift. And then Jess sold his the other three books. Uh, he sold the set, didn't he? Yeah. I I like, actually, I, come to me first? I think I know somebody that might be selling those too. Well, let me let me hit him up first. 
Oh, you're right. You're right. White out. Hey, you guys. Oh, I got those. I got them all. Beautiful book. Yeah, show it. What's yeah. up? What's up? Look at that. Do you all remember the um, issue of Alpha Flight that John Byrne did? I'm talking to the chat, not Maddie. She'll get there. Um, where he literally just, it was a Snowblind episode or episode um, issue where he just used white panels. <laughs> And a lot of people were accusing him of being lazy that he didn't want to draw, but it was during a snowstorm. And as a kid, I'm like, oh my god, this... Hey, Kai, I get it. Go finish that. It had... Damn it. I was in my middle of my John Byrne rant. I know, I know. I will say, so, Compa Curry said I thought it was an affirmation of Jesus, but a critique of organized religion. You're right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I slipped. Which, honestly, I always like to see. All right. I'm going to try something really quick. Before I do, though, what would the chat give this book if you've read Blankets? What would you give it out of 10? Maddie and I both gave this a 10 out of 10. And if you want to purchase it, I put this, uh, the link in the description where you can get it on the cheap. Am I still here? Yeah, you're still here. Good. All right. I shouldn't have any more issues now that I turned that off. I'm thinking some my I had to reinstall Windows on this machine, so I think it has to. <laughs> Maddie's face when Omar freezes. <laughs> what kind of face are you making? Oh, <laughs> because this happens. This happened to me in other shows, but I can never. When it was Google Hangouts, I was always pretty sure it was me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, "Well, is it?" Because you, you just wait. Cause sometimes it catches like the like the audio catches up. Oh, no one would know right. that I didn't catch all the conversation. <laughs> this is from Thank your you. review and spoilers, give it a 9 out of 10. We didn't sell you on that 10 out of 10, huh? Oh, it's good, Drew. You need to get it. It's it's, it's a really good book. It should be in everybody's library. Like my, my daughter was asking me if she could read it when she saw it. I'm like, ah, not yet. Yeah, get Let's it. wait. Let's wait a little bit. She's only 10. She doesn't know about heartbreak, and hopefully she never will. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. No <laughs> yeah, chance. No kidding. Back when the first printing of the Oni Press came trade came out for Whiteout, the first five hundred or so copies came signed by Rucka and Lieber. Oh, wow. Oh, that's badass. Dude, Alien and Aliens. You got a good memory, Dave. Yeah, my daughter watched Alien and Aliens. And we're not... I don't know. I I don't know. Should I show, let her watch Alien 3 and Alien Resur was Resurrection? Uh, You're a good kid. I watched all, I watched all sorts no, of... No, no, no. It's not that... No, it's not that she can it, she can't handle it. It's just that they're not that great. Of, especially Alien 3. It's just such a shit-tacular movie. Like, we've only seen the first two Terminators, because I was like, I don't know if I want to watch the rest of these. They're not that good. It's not like watching Back to the Future. Like, we had to watch the trilogy or the Lord of the Rings. But when it comes to, like, movies like Terminator or, yeah, Alien and Aliens, I'm like, should I go any further or should just let her discover those on her own and see how bad they... Mm, I would recommend just letting her figure out on her own. Yeah, I got a ton of other movies to watch. We're watching Cobra Kai right now. She loves it because she like oh. Karate Kid, the the follow up to Karate Kid. Dude, I I don't know if anybody has seen the Cobra Kai. It's free on YouTube right now. Uh, the season one is. I cried at episode four because it was like uh, it was the it was uh in memory of uh, what's uh Pat Morita, the guy that played Mr. Miyagi. And at the very end, I was I was moved to tears. I was like, "God damn it, Cobra Kai, you got me!" It's got '80s music. It's so it's so over the top, stupid. But man, love it. Ooh, that's a good that's a good that's a good movie too. I may do that. Yeah, she can she can handle movies like that. Like we we saw it. Like she really liked it. She can handle scary. I'm making a meme out of Omar's face. Oh, God, there's no telling what my face looks like. Yeah, man, that shit was good. Cobra Kai is, oh, Cobra Kai, never die. Oh, man, that that stuff was awesome.
And it's got you rooting for Johnny. You know what? This is not a Cobra Kai review. Sorry. Oh, man, I love The Crow. The original movie with uh, Brandon Lee? That's a good one. Yes, yes. But I want to I want to say much like Looney Tunes when I was a kid had a lot of adult jokes that I didn't get until I was an adult. That's probably true. Dude, no, dude. No, Raymond. Predator 2 with Danny Glover, even though Danny is a poor man's Arnold. That movie was awesome. Yeah, I was the same way, Joe. Were were you, Maddie? Did you watch horror movies as a kid, or did you wait until, like... Oh, I didn't really get into those until maybe middle school. Okay. And because then my sister showed me stuff like uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Carrie and 28 Days Later. And then it started. Although I loved horror games, though. Video games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, Silent Hill and Fatal Frame. They're really big for me. Oh, Fatal Frame, Iron Butterfly. Was it Iron Butterflies? That was... No, it's something else. But I can Crimson Butterfly, right? Something like that. Crimson Butterfly. Yeah. Oh, so good. That that one actually, was good. I'm actually playing play through those, um, but Silent Hill and Fatal Frame games in October. Age of Apocalypse Omnibus is not on IST anymore. Doesn't mean it's going out of print. Uh, maybe I haven't. I I need to look it up. I need to redo my Omnis that are out of print. I that's its second printing though. Predator 2 was so great when you see the alien skull in the ship. Not only that, but Predator 2 gave us spoilers, but, you know, I don't care if the movie's fucking 30-something years old. But Predator 2 is the reason why Bill Paxton is the greatest actor ever. Because he's been killed by a Terminator, an alien, and uh, the Predator. So, Bill Paxton, rest in peace. Yeah. Showing a lot of love for Predator 2. That's what's up. Are you kidding me, Omar Predator? Yeah, I'm not kidding you, Raymond. We all have weaknesses, man. Predator 2 is awesome. Now, I watched that when I was seven. And I was not supposed to watch The Exorcist. And have you seen The Exorcist, Maddie? Yeah, but I don't think I have any recollection. Uh, There are some scenes that will all... Well, I guess it depends on your age. Like with the crucifix, you know, you remember that? Oh. I mean, I. There are things you probably shouldn't see at seven years old. That's probably one of them. Well, I love, I love all those like exorcism movies. Mm. It's the cat it, in me. It's the, it's the. Uh, oh, I got some stories to tell you about my buddy, Father Frank. Omar, has your daughter seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Yet? No, not yet. But we're, we'll get there. Get her on we'll that. Get sure. We did watch this. We did watch this. Um, Halloween. Yeah, so I, it, my brothers are like, oh, you need to like get her to watch like slasher flicks, and I'm like, yeah, but like a lot of the slasher flicks, like I don't like, I don't. My my wife and I have discussed this about like language, like we don't mind language, but like the premise behind Friday the Thirteenth is that Jason is going to kill you if you have sex, like that's, I mean, that's the joke too. So I'm like, eh, maybe a little bit longer. I've never seen the Predator movie, not even AVP. Well, you're, not miss, you're not missing much on AVP, but Predator 1 is a classic. Predator 2. Not as good, but good. Dead Space is my favorite horror game. Yes, oh, Dead Space God. was awesome. God. There was a video game, and I know my buddy Rob and I have talked about it on our panels before. It was called Enemy Zero on the Sega Saturn. It was the same studio that did D. Do you all remember D and D2? Just the letter. It was a horror game. That game was freaking scary as shit. Because you had, like, the alien. It was like an alien from Aliens sort of creature. But it camouflaged itself. And you had, like, a tracking device. Like a radar that could read heat signatures. And you were hiding from it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I realized that. Crimson Butterfly is Fatal Frame 2. The Omen. That's a classic. I saw that as a kid, too. And when that old dude's head gets decapitated, that's forever stuck in my head, too. Because I think I watched that when I was, like, four. That's right. Bill Paxton does rule. 
We're losing. No, Maddie appreciates good '80s movies too, right, yeah. Maddie? Princess Bride and Dark Crystal, right? You're I'm a fan. Not of- a Dark Crystal fan. What? What did you just say? It was lost on me. Am I gonna have to find? A- I did not just freeze. <laughs> this is my face. I'm gonna have to find another new co-host. I love Breakfast Club. <laughs> Uh, Dark Crystal had to, you had to, I think. With, with, I don't know. I think Dark Crystal is just as good as Never Ending Story, but oh, it didn't have a catchy it's song. The best. Dark it's Crystal the best. was just as good, if not a use if, Muppets. Was, I think for this, I think for other people with nostalgia, they'll like Dark Crystal. But like for me, watching it later in life, like in high school, it's slow. Yes, it oh, is I've slow. Read, Dark Crystal is really slow, and it was just it was way too slow for me. I I get I get the nostalgia, but I don't have it. Pumpkinhead. Oh, I love that movie. That thing is still freaky. No CG needed, by the way. Love that. There's a scene in The Exorcist Three that is super scary. Ooh, I think I know what you're talking about. No, nobody really talks about two or three. Well, nobody really talks about two. That was a bad movie. I saw it when I was ten. Ruined my life. <laughs> Oh, yes. I miss that guy. Oh, here's a good question about the book. (laughs) Does it reward? Yes, it absolutely does. Because like I mentioned, there's so many things in this book that I had forgotten about because I've read, this is my third time reading it. And to me, I know it's had, you know, different layers, but the basis, you know, it's him, his relationship with, um, his first love, his relationship with his family, and then his relationship with God. But there's so much more in here that I, I yeah, it definitely rewarding to read it again. Legend of Hell House. I love all these recommendations. Because we are getting close to October, Maddie. You know what that means. Yeah. It means we're going to read Tomie. Oh yeah, that's where you want to go. You want to go with Tomie? I'll yeah. pick an. I'll pick a couple of other ones that we can do. System Shock too. Yes. I like the woods. Did you read the woods? No, not yet. Is that Ellis? Uh, I know it. It was just released on. Um, we just got the second hardcover. Oh, there's a. Is a hardcover? Okay. It's um by James. Tinian, Tinian the fourth. It's, it's published by. Oh, the Google. guy that did the guy that did uh, Detective Comics. It's really good. Mm, no, I haven't read that yet. I just I read it all in a couple of days. It was awesome. Can we can we read uh, Beautiful Darkness and have Jess on the show? Because I know he <laughs> hates that book. <laughs> it's got to be Beautiful Darkness again. I don't think. He I does. happen to love that book. I don't care what Jess says. Um, the. Okay, so wait, I lost that one because they were talking about the Dark Crystal series, and yeah, I want to read. I wa- we haven't watched that yet, so I need to rewatch the Dark Crystal with my daughters. See, Nightmare on Elm Street, the third one for me is the one that I want to show my kid because that's the one that's like, oh, Freddy isn't scary; he's actually funny and cool. There's Smotlock. I thought about you earlier, man. I said something that I'm like, you're gonna get this. I guess you weren't in the chat. Um, so rewatch it. I can't remember what I said now. Oh, it's all about Alpha Flight. That's what it was. That's what it was, man. First red blanket standing in a wall of yeah. books. It was that good. Started it and couldn't stop it. That's awesome. I've done that with manga. Just makes me miss Walden books. Yeah, me too. I, I miss their 40% off coupons. That would stack. When it was like to buy two, get one free. Mm-hmm. Freddy versus Jason versus Ash for old reader, new reader. Yeah, I'd be all over that. He doesn't. Jess is a man of poor taste. He doesn't love Darkhawk. He's not even here to defend himself. Yeah, Jess doesn't like... Look, don't take it personal, Spotlock. Jess and I don't ever agree on anything. I think we agreed on one book and that was Skyward. We were both like, that book is genius. And he was like, thank you, it is. And I'm like, hell must have frozen over because we both agree that book is great. Yes, that's why. The theme song, Dream Warriors. What do you know about that, Maddie? Have you seen that? Have you no. watched that? 
I haven't yeah, seen Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Oh man, we should screw old reader and new reader. <laughs> we watch should just that. watch a bunch of shit for Halloween. Go uh, with your twist. <laughs> I get to be the dude though. Okay. With that horrible haircut. No, yeah. or no, they had a monkey too. No, I'm thinking of uh <laughs> No, they was did they have a monkey? I can't remember. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking of I mean, uh, Space Ghost though. Buddies. The Belms, the best Elm Street movies are the first, third, and maybe New Nightmare. Yeah, I I happen to like New Nightmare. Dream Dream, what was it? Dream Warriors was awesome. Uh, what was the fourth one? Dream Child? No, that was the fifth one. Dream some Master, the Dream Master. That was uh, it was okay. I've read it. That's Tim Se- Tim Seeley's book, right? Hack Slash. Here, this is all that matters. Yes, I watched it right before the show. <laughs> I was all, I was sitting there, I was like, oh no, am I gonna finish it in time? I finished it just in time. It's so <laughs> good. It's so good. Uh this is the Steven Universe movie? Yeah, it just dropped yesterday. Like for streaming or for It it premiered yesterday on Cartoon Network, so I don't, I don't have anything to any way to watch it, so I just buy it on Amazon. Oh well, good for you for buying things. Yeah, and I, I buy the seasons too, so it helps me support it, and I can keep up with it up to date without having to go to some illegal site for it. You know? Yeah, it I is, try. It's a really fun musical. I've been legit for a few years, so I get it. Bleep! That was the dude's name, the monkey's name. I was right; it was a monkey. I'm glad Maddie liked blankets, so I don't have to publicly shame her. Thank goodness. We don't like doing that. <laughs> why do I know the monkey's name? Why do you know the monkey's name? And why did I remember there being a monkey? So it was Space Ghost Buddies that had a monkey. And the Wonder Twins had a monkey too. And now that song is stuck in my head. The Dream Warriors. All right, Maddie. Anything else before we wrap up? You have a live show on Thursday, right? Yeah, so if anybody's free, Tina and I will be talking anime on Thursday at 9 p.m. So come join us. Awesome. And I and Rob, last minute, are going to do our video game haul for the year. Or for the year? <laughs> for the year. <laughs> for the month. Uh, tomorrow uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as well. And that's a live episode. So. You know, come and join us. We may talk about horror movies because he works at Gun Studios, where they're the ones that did uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Speaking of horror movies, uh, oh, this is a good question, Maddie. Where are you doing that? It's not on this yeah. channel. I I'm still struggling with how to do it. Is this the problem? Do you want me to come over and videotape you? Yes, I said videotape. Yeah, it's you. not that. I just need I need to put together the guideline for it. That's it. I just need, I need like, like the best way to, to to do it and put it together, and then I'll do it. I need to do it soon before it all leaves my memory. Everything I've played. How about I help you create a spreadsheet? I saw these things that are trending with like list. You know what trending is? I don't, are you familiar with that term? The term trending, yes. Yeah, are you familiar? I just found <laughs> out what it was when Amanda was still our PR person. Oh my god. Yes, I'm that old. I don't keep up with this shit. I, I didn't even have Facebook for the longest time. Gleek. Was it Gleek? That's a good question. Omar, did you ever do a haul video on a huge manga haul you bought? No, it was anime, and I did do it. It was... I think the title is literally, so I bought a, a shit ton of anime when I was drunk. That's the title. Um, This is a compliment. Maddie, your last haul was epic. Thank you. It was. Maddie has epic haul. She's just been hiding them. I'm not the only one that buys shit on this well, channel. Well, it's just hard to put it all together. And then, honestly, I was putting it together. I was like, wait. Because I was going to do like a big summer haul, but then I couldn't remember what I got. <laughs> <laughs> because not every month is like a bunch, you know? So that month happened to work out where there's like a lot of stuff because I went to Gen Con too. But then, like, sometimes it's just a, a, a few things in a month. Gotcha. And I just forget. I'm like, shit, what did I buy? I don't know. Gleek was one of the puff creatures belonging to the Herculoids. <laughs> oh, that was Blip, Blip, and Gleek, right? Ah. 
I feel like a drunk manga haul would have been less shameful. Probably. People gave me a lot of shit for some of the titles that I bought when drunk. I, I was just looking at art, guys. If it had, like, I don't know, half-naked chicks and giant robots on the cover of what I bought, I clicked yes. NMC needs to do live stream playing Maddie's Buffy game. You have a Buffy game from your haul, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what is it? Uh, what kind of game is it? I mean, it's just a cooperative board game. I would love to stream some like horror games in October. There's like there's a few games that I think would be fun to mm-hmm. stream. It's just like find the best way to do that. Because I just picked up that oh I forgot what it's called, but um the new game by the creators of Int- Until Dawn, and I really think it'd be fun for all of us. Oh uh yes yes. I and play because I, I love Until Dawn and I love you know everyone kind of like passing the control around, choosing a character. I love games like that a lot, and this one's short enough that like it would be something we could do reasonably because other games like we're not gonna like regularly do a thing. Oh, sorry, this. <laughs> Or a six minute, like six hour thing, people can join in. You know, we we could drink some ciders and do it on Twitch because we can. We won't be able. All right, to all right wait, wait a minute, cider. I'll bring my whiskey. Okay, I'm trying to last the six <laughs> six hours. No, I want to be completely drunk uh, when I do this. You're right. Studio Ghibli does not need to be drunk. You're right. I own all those already, and they're coming out with a box set of all the movies. By the way, physical release. Uh, if they, you know what though, if they, and I may be alone here, but if they include all the shorts from the Ghibli Museum that are available only in Japan, Man. I, I would buy the shit out of that box set. Um, I wasn't able to, unfortunately. Uh, so for Marvel Champions, you had to be able, you had to like sign up ahead of time to go check it out. So I didn't get to, but I'll be pre-ordering it though, like for sure. Awesome. Elmer could be Cordelia. I want to be Xander. That was my boy. <laughs> Slither with Nathan Fillion was awesome. I love that. That was a James Gunn movie. I never saw that one. Smotlock, we gave... Maddie gave it a 1 out of 10, and I gave That's it a 10 out of 10. He's full of shit. It's a 10 out of 10. <laughs> full of shit. We both gave it a 10 out of 10. Because it is that wonderful, and rereading it was phenomenal. And highly recommended. Go buy it if you don't own it. Um. Okay. Anything else, Maddie? I think we've answered a lot of questions. Oh, gotten completely derailed and talked about horror stuff. Uh, yeah. My haul. Uh, please join us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Near Mint Con. If you haven't yet, we are posting our schedules there and uh, other things too. We are also on Patreon. If you enjoy the content of this channel and want additional things like blooper videos or early access to videos and get to vote on the reading comprehensive reading order polls uh maddie what else that's it check us out i did it all by myself hey you jumped in on it what you did i was i thought you had other things left to say no i have i have the quote which i'll do and i hit the button not tonight not matthew, matthew. No. <laughs> all right guys thank you so much for joining in we hope to see you again soon and remember it's classy and cool. It must be your mint. Good night, everybody. Good, night. Good job, Maddie. You got that down.